Ishgard cannot well endure another assault. Even should her knights succeed in turning back the Horde, the casualties will be catastrophic. But what other choice do we have? It's not like we can talk it over with them. Dragons and men aren't exactly on speaking terms. With certain notable exceptions. You don't mean Iceheart? When last you spoke with her, she lamented her crimes, did she not? Then there remains a sliver of hope. If we can persuade Iceheart to act as our intermediary, we may yet be able to convince Nidhogg to abandon his bloody course. If there is to be a meeting, I would accompany you. Estinian? Even with your intermediary, Nidhogg's blood rage may render him deaf to reason. However, the mere attempt may afford our forces precious time to prepare. Of course, you might also consider a more direct approach to ending this conflict. With the power of the eye at my disposal, and the vaunted strength of the Warrior of Light, we could conceivably slay the beast outright. If we are to risk a face-to-face -face meeting with the Dread Worm, I for one would feel safer in the company of the Azure Dragoon. However, I should only turn to your alarms if my words fail to find their mark. Is that clear? Perfectly. I shall assume that Isar enjoys similar diplomatic protection until instructed otherwise. A word of advice. Think carefully before divulging the particulars of this plan to Sir Emmerich. It would not do to have the Lord Commander accused of consorting with heretics. Indeed. I thank you for your counsel, Estinian. We shall be honored to have you with us. I am glad to be of service. of the Outer Ward rechecked. See to it that the ballistas are in good repair and supplied with enough ammunition for a prolonged siege. At once, my lord. Ah, twould seem I have visitors. And unlike those messing beyond our walls, these ones are welcome. Pray forgive us for interrupting you in the midst of your preparations, Sir Emmerich, but our suit concerns the impending assault. To speak plain, we believe there is a chance the invasion might be halted before it even begins. I can divulge little more at this time, but I must nevertheless request that you advise the Holy See to refrain from launching any preemptive sorties whilst we seek to put our plans in motion. I will gladly lend my support to any endeavor that could spare the blood of my countrymen, but I would know more of the cause you would have me champion. Will you not share aught of this mysterious undertaking? Know that I have offered my lance to aid in this endeavor. I cannot claim that its success is assured, but our actions should serve to delay Nidhogg's advance at the very least which is more than can be said for the ill-conceived counter-attack advocated by the sea's more vocal crusaders. They offer glorious death, but little hope of victory. Aye, 
Their proposal does not inspire confidence. Our resources should rightly be spent shoring up the city's defenses. Hmm. The Azure Dragoon and the Warrior of Light sallying forth together to face the Dreadworm Nid. I must admit, the mere thought of it does much to dispel my misgivings. Go then. Carry out your plan. I shall do what I can for you within the Holy See. Such commotion. Yes, Your Eminence. The bells of the Observatorium warn of our enemy's approach. So, the dragons are coming. Let them come, in their hundreds and their thousands. With the divine blade in our hands, we shall rend their flesh and drown the heretics in their master's blood. Even Nidhogg and his foul brood shall be powerless to resist us. And when we have rid the world of their pestilence, we shall turn our attention to our Asian allies. See that they are suitably rewarded for their invaluable assistance. If I may, Your Eminence, the Paragons wield powers strange and unknowable. Can we be certain that they will not see through our deception? We can be certain of naught save the righteousness of our cause. If you would be a true leader of men, you must possess conviction as well as caution. We seek to excise the root of an evil that has blighted us for a thousand years. The risk is worth the reward. And what of Estinian and this warrior of light? They have plans of their own. Leave them to their purpose. We must each play the role we have been given. You and your chosen brothers most of all.
god is down.
I should have known it would be you. Word reached me of a struggle with a small but well-armed band of trespassers. Forgive my comrades their hostility. Few come here uninvited, and fewer still with good intent. Now, tell me why you are here. So, you seek to stem the Dravanian tide with talk, a romantic notion. If you but knew the truth, the spark which lit the flames of this animosity, you would understand the futility of your quest. 
Shall I relate it to you? The sordid history my gift has shown me, that which the Holy See has taken such pains to suppress. Twas more than a millennium passed when an Elizan tribe first sought to claim the lands of Kirthas as its home. Unfortunately for them, Kirthas was already home to dragonkind, and they were not inclined to make way for the invaders. Thus did a bloody war begin, a war which might well have rumbled on until one or the other side was exterminated, had it not been for the resolve of a single woman. That woman's name was Shiva. While those around her fought and died, she attempted to parley with the dragons, and in so doing discovered them to be possessed of profound intelligence and reason. The great worm Horace in particular so enchanted Shiva that she found herself growing to love the creature whom her people considered a monster. In the eyes of a near immortal dragon, however, the fleeting life of an Elizan is as that of a freshly cut rose. Scarce has the flower bloomed before it begins to fade and wither. Such melancholy musings plagued Horace who had found in Shiva an unexpected and beloved soulmate. He knew that all too soon, death would snatch her away from him. Unable to bear the thought of their separation, the maid bid the worm consume her, that their spirits might be entwined for eternity. Though loath to perform the deed, Hreisvelga ultimately gave in to her plea, and soon thereafter, the tale of their ill-fated love spread throughout the two warring factions. No more could they raise blade or claw against one another, knowing that the souls of their kin were so inextricably bound. In the days that followed, man and dragon learned to live in harmony, and together built a nation unlike any the world had ever known. For 200 years did this blissful age of peace continue, as it would to this day, had vilest envy not stirred in the hearts of the Elizin. It is said that worms owe their longevity to the boundless reserves of vitality found within their eyes, and twas in this belief that a traitorous band of knights deceived their allies of some two centuries, and took by force that which they coveted. Nidhogg, he who now stands poised to unleash his wormlings upon Ishgard, was the great dragon who lost an eye to Elizan treachery. And until he prizes it from the hands of the traitor's progeny, no amount of conciliatory words will stay his fury. You are wrong, Lady Iceheart. Lest you misunderstand, I do not doubt your vision of the past. Tis true that Nidhogg greatly desired to reclaim the Eye. Indeed, it was for that very reason that I kept it with me as I roamed the land, attempting to draw him away from the city. The fuck? Good gods! Until recently, Nidhogg seemed unable to resist its allure and pursued me relentlessly. Needless to say, that is no longer the case. Now, it would seem, he has fixed his attention on Ishgard itself, though he knows full well the Eye does not reside there. You believe he targets the capital for another reason? I believe reason has all but left him. Through the eye, I feel much of what Nidhogg feels, and the dragon's thirst for vengeance will not be quenched by aught less than a sea of blood.
If Nidhogg is indeed lost to reason, might we not seek an audience with Hraesvelgr instead? He has thus far shown no inclination to aid in the invasion of Ishgard, and may yet welcome our efforts to broker a peace. You still believe that a peaceable solution can be found? Very well. I will take you to him. Our road will lead us to Dravania, the homeland of Dragonkind. There we shall ascend unto the clouds, where Hraesvelga resides. Is autumn miss, my friend? I sense the many battles are beginning to take their toll. Rest a while. And should you lose sight of us, Dravania lies beyond the mountains to the west. Curious. The vestiges of thy mistress's blessing are not as faint as once they were. Thy will to succeed grants thee unusual fortitude. But will it be enough? Beyond Abalathia's spine, the great mountain range that spans the continent of Aldenard from east to west. Into the deepening shadows of Som Arl, where lies the ancient home of Dragonkind. To a land where the soil slithers and the sky seethes with sinuous shapes, they came.
Tis thee, little one. From above I did mistake thee for a nerf. Tis well I chanced to look again, or thou wouldst now be ash. Dear Vidofnir, how I have missed you. Would that I had come sooner, and not out of dire necessity. Thou art troubled. Speak that I might know thy plight. Thou wouldst have father admonish his brood brother. I would end this war without further bloodshed. How am I to believe thee, little one? When thine own companion beareth Nidhogg's stolen eye! Have care, dragon, or I shall gouge out one of yours. You forget yourself, sir. We are here on a mission of peace. My sires will forbiddeth me from inviting discord to our home. Tis for this reason and no other that thou still drawest breath, knight. Vidofnir, please. We must be allowed to convey our intentions to Resvalgar in person, with words of our own choosing. Grant us this favor and open the way to Som Al. Thou hast ever been welcome, little one. But I cannot grant thy wish. I am bound to remain here and protect my kin from the Nath's god. The Nath have summoned a primal. Pray excuse my forwardness. But if we were to eliminate the threat to your territory, would you consent to Lady Izzel's request? Ha! <laughs> Dost thou imagine thyself equal to the task? To succeed where dragons have failed? Tis beyond thee, mortal. But thou art welcome to try, nonetheless. Only know that idle promises shall avail thee naught. It would seem we have no choice but to make good on Alphano's offer. <sighs> Why must our every bid for peace breed yet more war?